Palakia still takes care of scheduling the 10th grade. Okay. So she will look at his schedule. She will look at, okay, what his grades were um, first and then second semester in, say, social studies. Like, if, if he's taking civics or human geography now. Yeah. And she, human geography. Okay. So most likely, AP World is, is an option. Um, yeah. You have to read... You have to read <laughs> Mr. Benson <laughs> from top to bottom. <laughs> and then he has like, it's like one of those, those, if you ever taken that psychological <laughs> test, that MMPI, or whatever that thing was, you're like, didn't you just ask that question? You know, it's like, yeah, it's, um, I mean, it, yeah. it, it, if you read it all, it, it makes sense, but you do have to read you it. You really have to. Suppose. So, yeah. But the he, AP so came out earlier, right? Wasn't that, hmm? the AP would have been done in, like November, that's like a different time than what's happening right yeah. now, right? Did he, do you know, did he ask He's in AP Human Geography. Right, did he, in November, that AP thing, he, Mr. Bissett threw out, I've seen that. Maybe. I know that. I've seen that. I've seen that. The girls usually know exactly what they're supposed to do. I know that's sexist. The boys are like, what? Mr. Bissett? That's right. What? <laughs> um, no, really, no offense, but it is kind of, you know, the, because sure. most of the girls like get in a group at lunch and they go, what are you taking? What are you taking? What, what you know, that. Yeah. So, um, okay. I'll I'll this. okay. Just jump in real quick. If you want to follow up with your child's counselor or your child wants to establish their schedule, we tell them all the time to email their counselor. Subject line say, want to discuss schedule? Can we set up a time? <laughs> just about bus selection and and I guess what the um I know that last time I was with Bobby, you were talking a little about student rank and when it gets published and that we don't really do it for the younger kids. I happen to be in a situation where um uh, you know pretty my daughter needed her transcript for something for GHP and it came out and she came over to me. She's like, Dad, I've never gotten anything but an A. And I said, right. And she goes, well, how am I 50th in my class? And I couldn't actually answer this for her. And I was like, well, I think you go to the guidance house and ask how they rank you and whatnot. And she goes, I mean, what else can I do? She asked me, she's like, how more? And, and I actually don't know. Like, if you're kids, it's like, obviously, this is probably why we don't tell them young kids. But the other thing is, if she wants to know how to get to, she says, well, how do I get to 20? How do we get to 10? And I don't know. How do they, how do we decide or set rank for kids that, you know, all have the same grade? So there's the weighted, there's the unweighted grades. Um, this is a highly, or oh, it's a competitive, but 
90% of these kids here are overachieving. And so, um, 90% are about average. You know, if you talk about our valedictorian and salutatorian this year, there's minuscule difference. Um, but is Tina in here? Tina's in here, or Carrie? I don't know if you can speak a little to that. Um, sure, I'm sure. Okay. Been here forever. There are 10 people online. So if you're able to come over this way, that'd be great. Good morning, everybody. I'm Karen McFry, one of the assistant principals. Um, so you have an uh, underclassman, ninth or 10th grader. Ten. Whatever rank your student has right now is probably going to radically change over the next few years. Um, and I really, it hurts me when I hear kids obsessing about that class rank right now. We've all said, we all saw the show, right? <laughs> right. I mean, it, it was horrible. Yeah, perfect. Um, I mean, it really is. We're talking like hundreds of points separate these kids from each other. And so the advice that I give to students and I, I would give to parents is encourage your student just to do the best that he or she can. They have so much pressure in their lives right now. Um, they need to think about what they can realistically take upon themselves. Um, too often, I see upperclassmen who are taking five AP classes because they are worried about their class rank. They're worried about what colleges they're going to get into. And they are putting an inordinate amount of pressure on themselves. And they no longer have that balance in their lives. And so I think it's especially important for families to work with their students about becoming a whole person, a whole student. And then they're gonna bring that whole self into their applications. And colleges are not looking solely at what their point average is. They're looking at what package are we bringing to our school? What does this student bring to our institution? And so, um, you know, it really is. And all truth is GPA is gonna be the number of AP courses that the, that the students took because they get that 10 point addition on there. And then it's what their what grades they made in those AP classes. And it really is just the math beyond that. But I think what's more important is to think about your students' overall health. Okay. Um, I, I, I think this is relevant, but we recently had a panel at, in the college we were where some seniors came back or current freshmen came back and talked to current seniors. And across the board, no one said my GPA was really super important. The challenges they had, the successes they had, were built upon their ability to get along with their roommate or to balance their schedule or to meet with their professors and ask for help when they needed to. So those are the skills that they, you know, the, the people who just graduated from here said they either were glad they had or they struggled with because they didn't have them. So um, I just wanted to throw that out there because that was from the senior, the current freshmen themselves, so as their experience. And they went to, I mean, there was a Davidson, there was a UGA, there was a Tulane. We had kind of people from all over the place, you know, small, private, big, you know, large public. Um, and they all are pretty, something in Ireland, pretty consistent that um, message. That's it. Hi. Um, so I have a ninth grader boy, and um, he, those emails came out in much of your schedule and all that kind of stuff. So I wrote big emails to myself, you know, that was one of my like, let's do this tonight. And he came home and goes, Oh, yeah, mom, I did that. I already did that. Now he is going and he is going. <laughs> um, can I rest assured that he's set that I have gotten an email from his counselor or did I, can I check in and counselor? Oh, yeah, I could, yeah. And yeah, you can ask this like, yeah. Oh, it looks uh, like the third email has the schedule. Yes. So if you, so I just looked at that and I didn't realize it. So we did it second round and the third round email, it has what we put in there. That was like yesterday or nine, yeah, see, it was two days ago. Please. Yeah, but you could you would have gotten that email. Yeah. 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 I'm those emails from Special Bank So I've seen like all three yeah. emails yeah. and I've been able to look at the schedule and talk to my girls about it. And, Make sure they, you know, got yep. everything they want. If you're not and you want to be, um, just send um, Mr. Vincent an email and just ask to be connected to your uh, student, student's emails. He is a master of spreadsheets. 
And so <laughs> all he'll do is drop you into a cell and you'll automatically get the communication from him. And um, I just want to say, if you haven't met Mr. Vincent, he is phenomenal. He is the very best master scheduler anywhere. And he really takes into consideration what the students want and gives them chances. They can't always get everything that they ask for just because we have 1,600 students. But he does more than I've ever seen done at any other school in terms of um, addressing the students' concerns around their schedules. Well, James, happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I'll say, I think it was Ms. Talakia yeah, at the beginning of the school year, Robert wanted to get into weightlifting. And she spent 20 minutes on the phone with me trying to switch his whole kettle. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Right. <laughs> Let's take that off. The he does not need to do weightlifting. Wait, wait, it's like number one. In terms of the scheduling process, there are like two phases of it. So what Mr. Vincent does is he builds the master schedule. He takes all of the kids' requests, put them into spreadsheet, and then he does this like magical thing, <laughs> and the kids' schedules populate. That's the first round. And then the individual counselors, they go in, and then they make the fine adjustments to the schedules around things like, you know, weight training. If you want to weight training, when you can get it, or you forgot to ask for it for a second. Then the counselors, like Mr. Young, will go in and see if it fits, if there's room in the course for the student to be added. So, you know, they, they try to get in with that first spin of the wheel, but then there's room to fine tune it afterwards. I found it. It's here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have a question about electives and ABA. And my I'm going to kick this to Mr. Young. You mentioned ABA. I'm going to. I don't know you. that much about it. What's your specific question? question? What's your so my specific question is my son said that he needs help and civics as a requirement. So we signed up for those electives. We're all good to go. Got our third confirmation. And then as of last night, he says, oh, no, I think I'm going to take us ABA because it's easier, whatever reason, it's um, more efficient for him. It is all of that true. We just have that option now that everything's set, you know, like you've got our three emails, so yeah. possibility. AJ is our virtual well, option. That's can all you come up to the, can you, we've got 10 people online watching. So oh, wow. If you're able to stand here when you talk, Absolutely. that would really be helpful. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, yeah, ABA is our virtual option that the district uses to land a virtual academy. Um, civics is actually a core class. So it's a social studies course that's required typically in ninth grade. Um, and we do offer that virtual. Uh, but we don't recommend that they use that solely. We would like them to take their course for the Midtown instructor first. And then we use ABA as a supplement. So if they want to do a course for initial credit, in this case, that's what it would be in this case. Um, we can do that, um, but usually that's going to be beyond the day. So they'll have a full schedule here, and then those courses will be beyond the day. That's the first um, line yeah. of this, how we'll approach that. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter did both of those. She took the health last summer, a couple other people did. There's a drop day if you're, if you're not motivated to get your stuff done there's a drop day and you don't you know get a head for anything and now she's doing the civics right now and i'm getting and i get or... yeah and, yeah and i get emails telling me yeah she should be 23 percent. she's 25 percent through the class or whatever so i'm i and i know where grades are so i'm getting dates on it okay sometimes um, they call too but if you don't take civics freshman year a lot of kids you don't take human geography and they don't double up with no expert, you know, <laughs> kind of to take six as well, just because the schedule worked out where then she had to like should they take either the AP class senior year or civics with a bunch of freshmen. Yeah, the good thing about civics is that we offer an AP version of it, which is a year long, it's AP US government politics, and they could typically do that in 11th grade more commonly in the 12th grade, and that takes care of the civics requirement. So if you bypass it now, no sweat, we'll just revisit it at that time. Mm -hmm. Or they can Another do question ABA. about GPA for mm -hmm. how it's capped. I mean, Carrie did a good job, but Mr. Young works with it every single day. So, my class rank, I mean, is there anything else you want to ask about that? Yes, sir. Because I have a very uh, liter literal uh, child who wants it, has the same question about class rank. Is the answer that it's fundamentally in, in Infinite Campus the cumulative GPA it's where it matters? Like whether they get a 96 or a 95, not just an A versus a D. Is that the fundamental difference? Well, 
before we engage in this. I am no calculus math is not my background. That's why we have an algorithm in Ebony campus that would do all that configuration. What I can tell you is that uh, we are on a 100 point scale for our GPA, and we also offer the conversion on 4.0 scale. So we get two GPAs on actually four GPAs on the transfer. Two of them will be on a 100 point scale, both weighted and unweighted, and then we'll provide a 4.0 GPA, both a GPA both weighted and unweighted. So you'll see four of them in the GPA area, top left corner. The ranking is based upon typically the weighted GPA. And what those weighted courses are, any course that has the inflation, we may put 10 extra points on an AP U.S. government policy. All of our AP courses have 10 extra All of our DE courses have 10 extra points. So that GPA includes that 10-point inflation per course. The unweighted is just a raw calculation. And when universities are evaluating a student's transcript, they're going to look at the unweighted GPA. They have absolutely no interest in the weights that a high school does. Because we do something different than they do at Burkhart or Nett County. They do something different from Decatur City. So we're all doing something different for those, those advanced courses. So they have no interest in that. So they're going to look at the unweighted GPA. Now, ranking is determined based upon, you know, um, the GPA calculation. So a student has a 104.6. And no one else has a 104.6, they have 104.2. That person's going to be number two. It's straight calculation based upon the GPA. And I like what the parents said over here about when we have students come um, back to us and visit. I'll be honest with you, I've not seen a university really care about a student's ranking. I've not seen it. Um, I know there might be some generational things, and I don't know how you guys are old you are, but I'm going to date myself. I went to high school back in the late 80s. I graduated in 1990. That was a big thing, that what your ranking was. The Ivy League schools were concerned about it. Now, they don't care because everyone is a rank at those schools. Everyone, that's why they don't have any merit-based scholarships at those universities, because everyone's of, of merit. So what they're looking at really is the quality of your high school experience. They're looking at to see what courses did you choose to take? Why did you choose that? You know, what activities did you do? Did you all do something systemic in the culture of your school? They're looking to see what kind of impact they had as a person because we're really living in an age where we need to know who you are. The numbers are fine, but that's not, that's not been successful, of course, because many of those colleges took those students of high merit and they didn't return the next year because they couldn't retain them because they were stressed. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to change the you know, paradigm a little bit. Yeah. Well, I can just, as a generational thing, I think oh, probably 90% of the questions you all get about GPA in classroom are because people are used to exactly. assuming it's only on the four point scale. And so they're not, because that's how it was yeah. you know, 30, 30 years ago. So that whole 100 point scale um, is a little um, well, yeah. it's something to do. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, no worries. But we're putting the rank on the transcript, by the way. You probably noticed that. So it's on the transcript, folks. So when you order your transcript, you'll see the, uh, the ranking on there. So, but just understand that that's where we are in terms of the admissions process. So let's just make sure we have a quality experience for the students. That's what it's really about. That's what post secondary um, institutions have been asking us to do. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, we recorded it through our technical difficulties. It's recorded and we're having it uploaded soon. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're moving to a little bit of community service because that has changed dramatically how you log, how your kids log and all that. And then also Dr. Nami is going to talk about uh, a really great community service opportunity uh, during the break. But Tina, do you want to mention kind of the community service where we are with that and then... Just love being around when you're trying to find shots from So, uh, as you know, we have the district has shifted um, to my volunteer. Um, this is still a work in progress, and we are pushing through. Um, so, they are still trying to work out the bugs, but as of late, a lot of our clubs and activities have gone on to my volunteer because what has to happen? Before the kids can start logging their hours in my volunteer, the clubs and activities um, that they volunteer for have to go on and create a page on there, like a little link. And that then, once the students log in, then they'll click on that particular, for like beta club, they would click on beta club. And then they would go in there and say, I'm doing this event for this many hours. And then it'll go out to the side and say pending. Once the event happens, 
then that teacher who's the sponsor gets an email and says this student has pending hours. Will you approve or disapprove? Whatever. And so they will go in and approve that. That is the ideal format. Um, but again, we are still trying to get our teachers uploaded onto the platform, and that is taking some time. The district is assisting us. We have done a Google Doc. We've sent that down to them. So it's just a matter of time. But if a student volunteers outside, we are also encouraging our outside partners, we're sending them a link to also get onto the platform. But again, this was rolled out just middle of this year. It's still progressing. So I need everybody to be patient. But if a student does something and it is not on the platform, all they simply have to do is default to that document that is under the counseling tab. If you go to the counseling tab and you click on forms and downloads, it's, I think, the second form. And it says logging your hours. So students can just do the paper pencil or they can save it to a Google Doc, whatever they want to do, and just document their hours that way if they're not able to do it on my volunteer. So in lieu of my volunteer, do the, the other document until we are completely solidified. It is my feeling they are trying to work through it. I don't think we're going to be 100% my volunteer until the beginning of next year. That's just my feeling, just because it is taking time. And every time we get an email from a partner, we're sending them the Google link to complete. Then outside partners, they have to be vetted. So that takes time for the system to vet them to put them on. So it's just, it's a work in progress, but anytime your student dedicates their time and completes hours, we will give them credit for that. They just have to document it and submit it to us. Um, so it is a work in progress. I, we are gonna, I'm gonna sit down with Mr. Montero and kind of look at our website and probably just put all of the community service um, at the district's um, guide in one location, it will be probably a tab underneath the counseling department. So I am going to work with Mr. Montero on that today. So you simply click on that. You'll see the guidelines. You'll see um, the paper copy and the quick sheet to get into my backpack. I mean, my backpack, my volunteer. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. I uh, so with regard to the volunteer uh, partners, right, is the, is the, School district going out to them, or are they coming to us, or how, did, how is that anyway? Well, Midtown typically has worked with a lot of different partners, mm -hmm. and so what they're doing is they'll send us information, and then we send them, they'll say, we're looking for kids, okay. and we're like, great, we will promote this, but please complete this link, and hopefully they do, and once they complete the link and they're vetted, then they're added. Okay. Um, um, partners like United Way, those kind of partners are already on there. Um, it's just other, like Trees of Atlanta. I had um, Virginia Highland Civic Association. He reached out to me. He completed the link. He reached out to me yesterday and said, I don't think I'm up. How will I know? And I explained it to him and then said, if you, you don't get an email by Friday, let me know. I went ahead and emailed then our district person and said, please keep a watchful eye out for this one because he wants to be uploaded to our platform. So again, we're, it's just, it's just getting through it. Gotcha. Okay. So as, as parents, can we help get, uh, can we send that link to people to get vetted on the system and put things on, or does that have to come I would prefer, it probably seems a little more legit coming from us. So if you just email us and say, this is a partner, can you, um, this is their contact information. Can you please send them the link? And we're happy to do that. I mean, you can send them the link too, um, but it might be better if it comes through us because then we can follow up because then we have knowledge of who's trying to get on there. And just like I did yesterday by emailing the district person, I said, please keep an eye out for Virginia Highland Civic Association. Yeah, so I just, think the Civic Associations are great. And uh, what about churches? Uh, and we'll have they logged on or I haven't seen any churches on their synagogues I have not yeah but that is something that they can definitely do okay. it's just you know anytime you shift from one platform you know we had one platform 
Um, and then we went with no platform and now we're engaged in a new plat another platform. It, it just takes time, but I truly believe honestly that once we get through this year and start the beginning of next year, I really think it's going to be a great platform. It's easy for the kids to see. It's easy for once they get on there for the teachers to take care of stuff. It's easy for the counselors to be able to see the hours. It's just a matter of getting everything in there. <laughs> so just be patient with this. We have a question from the chat about, yes. do you have to volunteer only with partner organizations for it to count? No, and that's what I was saying. Default, if they are not on the platform or they're not already a partner of ours, just make sure that you are using that um, under counselor forms and downloads using the log sheet and logging your hours either on paper and pencil or a Google Doc so that you can submit it to your counselor. And I don't know if Mr. Young said this, but any senior, you need to have at least 20 hours submitted to your designated counselor no later than the 31st of January. That is a hard deadline. We need 20 hours to be submitted to your counselor if your student is a senior, because then I think there's a deadline in March that they have to have all 40 in. Yeah. Cheryl's going to talk a little bit about a service opportunity coming up in February. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Um, Cheryl Lamias and Student Support. And um, as I saw a couple of faces as people were talking about 20 hours by this time, and you know, if you're a freshman, 75 hours by the time you're a senior. And I think we can all agree that community service, just service in general, is laudable. It's something we all want our kids to be involved in. It has so many benefits. Um, and then sometimes when we put a number on it and put it in front of people with the array of other things they have to accomplish, it kind of sucks the good out of it. And it becomes one more thing that I have to check off and we start to lose some of the value. And so what I wanna to talk to you about is um, an approach that we are gonna try here at Midtown that is funded by generously by the Midtown Foundation, the folks who brought you Saturday School. Um, they're really working with us to kind of fund things that are gonna help all students here be able to achieve some of these goals that we've put before them academically, community service, um, and still keep the balance, keep their mental health, um, feel pride in their school. So the, the first um, iteration is called Community Days. And the idea is if we at Midtown value community service and we want our kids to participate, that we bring those opportunities here to the school building where we know kids can get it, where we know the adults who can sort of supervise, where we can teach them to use this new technology to learn to sort of get in the habit of putting things in my volunteer. And where we, someone asked about community partners, where we've kind of pulled in partners that we know are good, that we know are going to have work that's going to be meaningful for our students to do. Um, and so we have chosen three community partners for our first two community days here at Midtown. Those are going to be during the February break, because the other piece is putting them during a time, Saturdays, breaks, when students aren't doing school where they can come up and earn their community service hours. So our first two are going to be February 21st and 22nd. That's the Tuesday and Wednesday of this upcoming February break. When students come up, they're going to have the opportunity to earn 12. If they do both days, they'll have an opportunity to earn 12 total hours. So if you're a senior sitting, you know, on the brink, that's a lot of hours that you can get. We've already had, I think we put the flyer out just to students um last friday so less than a week ago we have 63 kids signed up signed themselves up for both days so that's even before we started having counselors you know really start pinging kids and saying you really need to come we've capped this first one at 150 but basically how it's going to work i'll tell you a little bit these three different organizations are going to come one is called the backpack project and this is a student-run um, project. UGA is where the CEO is and the group of students who run it, but they have affiliates on all these different college campuses throughout Georgia, including Georgia Tech. They are going to come over and work with our students to pack 300 backpacks for homeless people. And they have a lot of corporate partners like Bamba and, you know, different organizations where they really sort of um, figured out like what the highest needs are. And we're going to pack those packs 
We're partnering with the Sandwich Project, which is another nonprofit here in Atlanta. And our kids are going to make a thousand sandwiches um, to distribute to people who are food insecure throughout the metro area. And the third is in town collaborative ministry. So if someone asks about churches, you know, in town collaborative ministry coordinates between churches and they do sort of a version. It's like hygiene packs and um, snack packs. So all three of these um, partners are focused on homelessness and food insecurity by design. Because when we talk about like that well-roundedness and having kids really like learn and care about something and have sustained interaction, not two hours here, one hour here, three hours here, you know, checklist. If we can sort of cultivate that and say, hey, we're going to bring in these partners. They're going to teach you a little bit about the issue. Then you're going to do something hands-on to actually impact the issue. And then every time that you come up, that you want to come up on a Saturday or come up on one of these breaks to a community day and work with your, your peers and with Midtown staff to impact this, this problem, this issue in the community. Now a student can graduate from Midtown having achieved all their community service here in our community. And they can say, I volunteered for you know, work towards this problem for four years. And that's very different. You know, that's a very different experience. We've got, it gives us the esprit de corps of having a lot of our kids at multiple grade levels all working together. Um, it's good for their mental health. They need to be with peers and not just in a classroom, doing things, talking, face-to-face -face interaction. Um, it gives them pride and investment in their school. The other thing that we're going to do on these community days is we're going to have opportunities for kids to help clean the school. So we'll be like cleaning classrooms, doing sweeping, not bathrooms, not dangerous chemicals, basic housekeeping <laughs> that our custodial staff literally, every time a class enters and exits a classroom, it could be cleaned again. It's sort of this endless opportunity for kids to, in Japan, there are no custodians. Kids clean their schools from the time they're little. You know, so again, it's going to have this sort of pride in your building aspect. And it'll be fun. We'll put on music. Kids will do these tasks. Midtown staff will be supervising them. Um, it's going to lower a barrier to graduation. Um, as a parent of a 14-year-old, I have a freshman year. My older two are launched. Um, when you tell me my child needs to do community service, that's really telling me. My child can't drive. My child's too young to be accepted as a volunteer at most homeless shelters or a humane society or whatever. So you're kind of putting that on families to figure that out. So now kids are waiting until they're old enough to drive or kind of handle things themselves. And now they're up against, you know, a bigger number. So the idea behind these community days is to enrich the community here, to help students meet this, um, this requirement, and to teach them something. So basically to put back into community service all the good and kind of get rid of some of the barriers that make it become maybe not so good sometimes. So that's it in a nutshell. We hope your kids will sign up. We have all, it's really interesting. We have an almost equal spread between 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders who've signed up. Yes. I didn't hear it, but did you mention how many people have already signed up? 63. 63? Yeah, I just checked my spreadsheet right before I walked out. Awesome. Yeah. And they scan that little QR code. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. It's capped at 150 this first time only because it's our first time. So we started Saturday school and we didn't know how it would go. Our last Saturday school, we had 160 kids. It's like, you know, and, and so you kind of get a feel for So we capped this at 150, but if it goes well, we'll expand it. Yes. Um, I just want to first say this is amazing. Thank you. Oh, good. Um, and you, you mentioned the first dates in February, but do you have the rest of the dates as of yet? So we don't yet. This is our pilot. And what I said to um, the foundation who generously, you know, funded the materials, like they're going to pay for us to buy like all of our clean materials, the sandwich product, you know, the materials for the kids to use for service. And then what we're going to try and do is definitely add it to the Saturday school days. So kids could come up and we'd have a staff member here on Saturdays. So a student who maybe they don't need to come for academic support, but maybe they need service, add it there. And then we definitely wanted to shoot for spring break because that'll be the next week long break. So the idea is this is the vision. If we can get two or three days every week long break, because now we have those throughout the school year, plus add on to Saturday day, Saturday school, you know, they could get like four hours on a Saturday. 
potentially a student ninth through 12th grade could do all 75 of their hours here at school and never have to go find something. They could just keep coming here and doing that. So um, this is our pilot. We're going to see how it goes. The goal is for spring break to be the next time and to start adding it to Saturdays. Other questions? Yes. Uh, we plan to do that over the summer. Uh, maybe. It's a good question. Uh, it's costs. You know, we have to pay. I mean, we're, we're giving teachers a stipend. Yeah. We're doing this because it's, of course, on their off time. But same thing. We have to happen on the summer. The foundation is extremely uh, generous with all these things that we brought with them. So I think if this is successful, you know, we also have a work day, a teacher work day in March. Uh, that the teachers couldn't do it, but maybe like Cheryl and her crew, some of our other support staff could do it as well on that end. Yeah. Working. I mean, I would love that. I think that would be ideal. So it would just be a matter of getting the funding. And I think that if we could start to get the community, so you all, um, right now, Midtown Foundation is paying for the materials, right? Because we need to have the backpacks and all the stuff and the food to make and all that. Um, in the future, I would like to see us say, hey, Midtown community, your family can sponsor a backpack for $20. Your family can sponsor 100 sandwiches for $32. Your, you know, and like if the community were like, you know, giving um, money just to support the material side, and then the students are doing the labor side, right? And so that would be a much more sustainable than continue to ask the foundation, like, hey, you know, can you continue to sh shell out several thousand dollars so that our kids can do service? So I think it will, um, like, that's the way that I think we could sustain it too. Because I know many of you would rather give us a donation of $100 than go figure out community service for your child, right? <laughs> we'll do the hard part, just, you know, help us out or donate to Midtown Foundation or, you know, I think this is the way that we see it in the future is everybody knows how it works and then we're all working together to make it happen for the kids. We have two questions sure. in the chat. One is when the kids show up for the event on that's the, during the fall break, will they be assigned to which organization they're volunteering with or will they have a choice? And then the second question is, is the requirement back to 75 hours? The requirement for freshmen is back to 75 hours. The requirement for seniors is 40. I don't know in between. Does somebody know? I think it's the seniors age. Juniors are 40. Sophomore and freshmen are 75. Sophomore and freshmen, 75. Juniors and seniors, 40. So this could be especially meaningful for juniors and seniors. You know, between this and spring break, if we just do two days each break, they could get uh, 24 hours of community service. So the question about the organizations, the way that we have it, again, this is our pilot, so we have it planned. All three of these projects are gonna be um, on day one, we're gonna have them going and we don't know how long it'll take, right? So we sort of estimated if we have 150 kids versus if we have 70 kids, and then it might go into day two, but all kids will have the opportunity to do all of them. So the backpack project, for example, is coming from 12 to 2. So we'll shift from sandwiches to backpacks or we'll do, um, we're going to serve lunch, but we decided that it would be great if like our kids made the lunch for all the other volunteers. So like we'll have some kids that'll be, instead of making the sandwiches for, that we're packaging to distribute to food insecure people, they'll be making food for everybody who's volunteering. So we're going to have all opportunities for all kids to be involved in all of the things, including some of the like cleaning projects around the school. We'll also allow teachers to give us special projects. So like if a teacher has 5,000 things they need folded or athletic director says, oh, I need these envelope stuff. We'll do that too. We'll sort of bring those projects in so that kids can work on them hands on. And really, again, it's about like, supporting your community. This is our community. This is their community. So giving them a chance to do things for this immediate community and then just the Metro Atlanta community. Other questions? Awesome. Okay. Yay, thanks. Thanks, Newtown and Foundation. We do have Saturday school this Saturday. Yep. Please come. Um, Kids, any kids are welcome. I'm just love that. Don't so suggest. Saturday school is not a punishment. It is a, uh, <laughs> no, no. And all of us that are my age are thinking, 
Burns Club. Right? Yeah, you know, yeah, running through the building, right? <laughs> uh, doing things, smoking, stuff like that. But it's um, they show yeah. up at nine. They get a Chick Fil A biscuit and a bottle of water. We have all the core teachers spread out to help in any subject area. We have a designated person, a proctor, missing tests or anything that they're behind on. And it's chill and it's nice and it's supportive and it's not a punishment at all. It's totally voluntary. And we had 160 kids show up to our last one. So kids like it. Yep. So it, we're going to continue to build on Saturday school and create other. There's going to be a PTSO parent workshop so parents can come up on a Saturday and learn about, you know, different issues. So it's going to become like even more expansive from nine to it's from nine to noon. So they just roll up to the store. We have a QR code. They scan in. They get their Chick-fil-A biscuit. We take their cell phone. We take, I mean, we, we, the rule of Saturday school is no cell phones. Kids are super good about it. They're super focused. And so we do it, um, we're having it six Saturdays this semester, February 28th, I mean, January 28th, February 11th, March 4th, March 25th, April 22nd, and May 13th. But there's a poster. So all those things. And it's also a community service opportunity because... Our old, a lot of our older kids. Oh, you're making peer tutor. Tutor as well. Yeah. Ninth that graders can The amazing tutor. thing is to watch what happens during Saturday school. Like, you, there'll be a table over there. And sometimes there's like, I remember last time, like Ms. Brain, social studies teacher, she was there. Kids would come to her for social studies, not just her class, but social studies. But then in the, the counseling suite, there's five kids teaching math to other kids. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. Any of your kids who want to earn community yeah. service hours, peer tutoring, they could be in ninth grade. It doesn't matter. As long as they're like, you know, they feel confident in a subject, algebra one, whatever, they can come up here and peer tutor and earn four hours in a Saturday. And it's awesome. It helps us a lot. Just, <laughs> do they you just drop in? You don't have to register ahead of time or for kids to tutor or to be tutor. We do have a registration ahead of time, but if they show up, we'll 900 percent take them and put them to work. What if <laughs> tutoring? What if they want to be a tutor? There's a QR code. So tell your kids to look on Schoology and there's a red like if they want a tutor, Cheryl, they want Sorry. to show up and tutor other kids. Do they need this? So they can't, they, we do have a sign up for them to sign up for your tutor, but if they if they can't find it and they want to just show up, they can totally show up and we'll put them on. Okay. I can also always email. Yeah, Cheryl. you can always email them. Okay. And it's in the okay. So let me talk about a little bit. And it's in the school, which I know is really, really good. And again, I'm sitting, just, I've had way too much bleach or sitting lately, and so my back is killing me. So, this is an incredible statistic, and it may not mean a whole lot to you all, but to look at it, this year we really started a huge push with our freshmen to make sure that freshmen had the, set, the same opportunities, that all freshmen had the same opportunities to get to Zell Miller, Hope Scholarship, Community Service, that we're making sure that every kid has that opportunity. And so um, I'm very proud very, very proud of this statistic. So failure rates are really important for ninth graders, especially, because if you fail a class or two in ninth grade, you are constantly trying to catch it because you either have to go online, take an ABA class to redo that algebra or redo that um, biology first semester. You go online, it's either an additional class, like what we call the ninth class. You have to do it, or we have to put you in a credit recovery class here at school. And that just starts this cavalcade of catching up, catching up, because then you're, say you failed um, biology, say you failed geometry, you know, then that next year you're trying to take geometry while you're taking algebra two. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's awful to get behind. So we're really pushing the ninth grade. But so if you look at um, these two things, so this right here, failure rate, excluding honors classes. So we're talking about kids that really do struggle sometimes with this. So the uh, blue is what last year. So in fall of 2021, at the end of the semester, 25.2% of our kids failed algebra one. That's awful. That means it's <laughs> like a, you know, a quarter of our class of 400 is having to redo algebra one part A. This year, 13.1%. That is a significant drop. 
It is all the efforts that all of our ninth grade teachers are doing, but it is huge. Saturday. I guarantee you a ton of those kids came to Saturday school and got work done. And the key to passing at Midtown is getting the work done. That is getting it turned in, as you all know. Biology, 16.3% failed it first semester in 2021, only 12%. The civics, that is a huge thing. 15.9% um, failed it last year, 72 this year. And then um, ninth lit is also dropped. That's really, really big. Okay, so that is excluding honors. So that's not algebra one age. That's not biology age, um, civics age, it means honors. It, that's not. And then, so total, um, for all classes, so if your child was on algebra H or just algebra, uh, we had that same kind of drop as well, decrease in failures. That is an amazing thing. Many schools struggle with this. Um, and I'm just really, really proud of that. And it is what the Saturday, why Saturday school is really important and what I, all the other schools need to really, it, we value teachers and what we pay them. So if I had a Saturday school and paid them the APS rate, use my own salary, it would be less than $30 an hour for the teacher. That is not worth getting up on a Saturday. That is not worth trying to find childcare for your kid on Saturday, um, skipping a soccer game or skipping a bit. So the foundation pays a lot more uh, per hour. And I'm very much in support of that. I mean, Cheryl really pushed that with the foundation and they gladly pay. The money is there. The same thing with the this community service hours are paying teachers to be here. We're respecting teachers' time, um, and they give it their all. I mean, if you come, any parent, you you come and you're in that in the counselor suite on Saturday, you'll see four science teachers: Mr. Daniels, Mr. Hill, Mr. Curtis, uh, Mr. Davis has been there working with kids. You can't buy that. It is like two. You cannot buy what we are giving you on Saturday. It is Mr. Hill working with four kids on biology assignments that. I mean, it's better than tutoring, you know, than the weekly tutoring. So uh, I really like what we're doing with that. I'm very appreciative to the foundation. So please know that all your money that goes to the PTSA, Saturday night, the auction, PTSA, and the foundation is used for kids and teachers. Absolutely 100%. Uh -oh. So I'm just really, really proud of that statistic. Um, so let's talk, Phoebe, come and talk. Phoebe Chung is our uh, real handles testing and so she's going to talk about what's coming up some of this is voluntary uh sounds for all okay so march is going to be a month of march madness uh we have testing pretty much every week uh these first two right here map reading and map math this is not a voluntary situation all ninth 10th and 11th graders will be participating in the map reading and the map math um, thankfully, this is going to be the last round of map testing for the entire school year. After this, we won't have to do it again. Seniors are obviously excluded from this particular adventure. Um, and then on March 22nd, we have the SAT school day, which is for our 11th graders only. And March 28th, we will have the ACT school day for our 11th graders only. And you will notice that this is within a week of each other. If you have juniors, who are trying to do both, this is something to consider. It might be a very stressful time for you if you want them to take both of those within the week. Um, it's okay if you just want to take one and you can, you can still opt to take the ACT or the SAT at a different time on your own. This is just the two dates that APS has provided for us at the school day. And those days mean like you're actually administering the the, the ACT, mm -hmm. like so they don't have to deal with finding it on a Saturday. Like, in a, like it, this is unless you want to improve your score, right, but you can you can. This could be like your time, and this happens every year. Yes. Okay. The ACT thing is new. This okay. well, we jumped into it last year. Love of ACT yes. pre ACT. This is brand new. Okay, I was just noted because I noticed like last year. It, the, the national day conflicted with like the state cross country need and things like that. So I was trying to, this is great that there's a Wednesday. I was just trying to plan is, ahead. Yes, but in some it. ways. Some, <laughs> yeah, okay, I can see that. <laughs> Other things. <laughs> um, okay. Yes, so those are the two opportunities that our 11th graders have here at the school. This year, this is new pre-ACT for our 10th graders. 
I'm still waiting on uh, district instruction about our ninth graders, but I know for certain that uh, tenth graders have the opportunity to take the pre-ACT here at school if they wish. Yes. Uh, our students are not participating in the SAT or ACT. Is, are those asynchronous days? No, they are not. They will be regular school days. Okay. They will be in class as per usual. Questions about testing? More information about this will be coming. I'm really just waiting to hear back about um, the pre-ACT before I send an email out to everybody regarding any kind of testing in March. So just watch for those emails. They will be coming from Mr. Vincent, but I'll be the person writing them. And then what happens in April and May? Oh, gosh, yes. Um, April, we have our milestones. Um, I didn't want to put that up. Yeah, that's, that's very good. scary. So. Um, April, we have our Georgia milestones after spring break. And then in May, we also have AP exams. We have over a thousand students who will be taking AP exams basically throughout the entire month of May. Um, so if you're a student, uh, Mr. Vincent should also have already sent out emails to anybody who uh, wanted to take an AP exam. I believe that deadline has long yeah, passed to, to register for AP exam. So if at this point in time you have not registered for an AP exam, it is already too late to do so. Um, if you are taking an AP exam, you should have already heard from Mr. Vincent. That was back in November. Yes. yes. That's not our deadline. So. Yep. All right. Um, so so Ms. On. Tanner is going to come up and talk a little bit about where we are with STEAM. You know, our initiatives cluster wide for what we're doing with STEAM. Okay, so um, the Thursday after all of that testing in March, um, March 30th, we're going to have a STEAM carnival here in the school for the kids. So right now the STEAM team is working on, we're um, working on partnerships because we want the students to have people from the community and in the actual fields of their unit plant, their unit lessons to actually come in and discuss with them their point of view because, you know, a teacher couldn't possibly know anything. So it's better to bring a person from the community in and that's a professional in the field. Um, also, we have, we're partnering with KSU a little bit, so they're going to assist the STEAM team with some lessons next week. Um, and we are going to take a few of the teachers to the National Arts Education Association Conference because it's a STEAM um, signature program, and some teachers are a little, like, uh, unsure, feel a little insecure about the art part. So we want to try to empower that aspect of it. Um, and me and Ms. Cosby are still working on the STEM endorsement with Metro Arisa, but we, um, Atlanta Public Schools just sent out an email. So we want to try to get more teachers to get STEM endorsed. And I sent an email out to the teachers. It would be great if we had a lot of teachers who have the STEM endorsement on their um, teaching certificate. So last week, here are some pictures. So this is some of the things we did. This is the teacher, Ms. Pope. Um, we did, they did a roller coaster project. They had to actually like create the uh, mathematical little, whatever. I'm trying to do it, but you know. Um, so she, so I brought in the VR headsets and she's actually riding the roller coaster. So that's why her hands are up because, you know, when you go to the top of the roller coaster, you put your hands up. And last week at the um, Winter Fest, I did green screen. So this is them with the green, and then I pushed it over to this um, with the back, different background. Right now, the art, I mean, the ELA department is downstairs working on, um, I call it um, ELA on Canvas, ELA Romanticism on Canvas. On Canvas, excuse me. So they did a little pre-project. They did something by Edgar Allan Poe, who you know is always really kind of gruesome to me. But um, so they did some masks. So they're right now downstairs working on Canvas portraits for romanticism. And um, I worked with our parent liaison to bring in some of the um, Esau parents and discuss with them some of the um, technology available to them and introduce them to the fact that we're moving to STEAM. So this is actually a parent doing the marshmallow um, challenge. 
So right now at the school, because they the APS, I have two different things going. I have requirements from the Georgia Department of Education and requirements from Atlanta Public Schools. So Atlanta Public Schools wants us to um, talk about to the kids different types of characteristics that are basically called the STEAM learner profile. So um, this month we've been focusing on Excel academically. I've been putting announcements on the um, intercom and on the monitors about smart goals, time management, and dual enrollment. And if you want your child to participate in dual enrollment, um, there will be a session on February the 15th for dual enrollment. And guys, that's your child can take college courses for free. So you should invest in that or just come to the session and um, think about it. It will be February 15th at 6 o'clock p.m. here in the Media Center. Um, also, we have a STEAM. It's so hard for me to say, and I try to get the children to change it, but we have a student STEAM team, and I call it the Teen STEAM team. And I said to them, do y'all want to change it? They were like, we don't have a sound. I'm like, Okay, so we um, there's a STEAM ambassadors group at all the elementary schools, and we collaborated together, and we're going to have a STEAM cluster day with all of the little teams. So the high school students are going to be the leaders, and the STEAM team today, we meet on Thursdays, are going to practice some of the activity. So we have the B-Bots. They're going to do curling with, they're going to um, program the B-Bots to do curling. They have a Star Lab. Um, Spring Up Park purchased a Star Lab, which is basically a portable planetarium. So they're going to do a Star Lab event, and they're also going to let us borrow the Star Lab for the astronomy. I mean, is it astronomy class? Yes. And then um, they're also going to do we were probably going to do green screen, and we were trying to, I forgot the other two, but it's like they're going to be rotating to different stations and just learning the community. So it'll be Morningside, Hope Hill, Spring Death Park, um, Howard, and Midtown. We'll all be there that day. And um, I think that's all we just planned. Oh, this is what I want to discuss on. This is the biggest part. So we went, I sent this out to the staff. We had five options for a STEAM signature program theme for the school. Um, and so the top three came out to being making space for everyone, global problem solvers, and STEAM innovators of tomorrow. So when I spoke to the STEAM team, they were like, I want to be a global problem solver. I don't want to solve problems. For them. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> so I'm like, interesting to get your point of view. So um, I think we should probably say community problem solvers that reach the goal, you know. So um, also, we're doing this thing called STEAM trunks. So the STEAM trunks would be um, basically a cart of materials for the teachers to check out and they can use it for different projects in their classes. So I asked them which type of carts they wanted and the top three were, were the 3D printer cart so they could do projects and have the 3D printer. Um, the VR headsets, of course, and um, drums. So we're gonna try to start with those, but also there was a lot of interest in the podcasting and the ELA department is doing a podcasting project right now. Um, just checking to make sure I got everything. So we are definitely planning to see Carnival. If you are a parent that wants to assist, have any ideas, would like to participate, I am more than happy to accept your assistance. So you can uh, reach me at stanner at apsk12.org. You have any questions or concerns? All right. All right. That, yes. Excellent. Um, that's excellent. Um, I want to close out with athletics. Coach Johnson, tell us what's going on with athletics now. All right. I'm going to give you the, the two-minute synopsis of where we are. We're never in a lull, but uh, we are a little bit of the calm before the storm because spring sports haven't fully started with, with teams yet. So. 
Uh, we are in winter sports right now. Um, we have swim and dive going. They just finished second at the city championships last night. And they have states coming up on Saturday. So quite a few of our athletes qualified for states. Hopefully a good showing. Um, a boys basketball is sixth in the region right now. We're in a new region of nine teams. So they're sixth. It's all bunched up right in the middle. There's five more games for them to play. I'm so looking forward to the postseason. And then girls basketball is uh, having an amazing year. They've got I think, 15 wins now. They're second in the region. Um, five games to go as well. Uh, there'll be a region tournament for both those teams. So, you know, a chance to to make into state. The top four from the region tournament all make it to state. So uh, should be a good showing from swim and dive. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, for girls basketball, boys basketball. Um, soccer had their first scrimmages this week. Uh, and they'll get started in the regular season against Lovett next week. Uh, tennis has their first matches today at Piedmont Park for St. Pius. Um, so that should be strong. And and then the rest of our teams get going either next week or the next couple of weeks beyond. So I think we'll have, I mean, we've had a, a good year already, but spring sports are always uh, really strong for us. And we'll have some good, uh, some teams that should compete at the state level, a lot can compete for reaching championships. So um, it's been a good year of sports so far and looking forward to a good spring. All right, then. Spring football. Starting then. Starting soon as well. <laughs> right back to it. Okay. Is there anything that we did bring up or any other questions? Reminder about the auction Saturday. Auction? John, what <laughs> All right. Just real quickly, we have our annual fundraiser this year. Uh, it's on Saturday. And earlier we were talking about budgets and how expensive it is to educate all of our children. The PTSO, and you've seen with the foundation as well, we provide operational assistance to the school, teacher grants, classroom startups. We only have one fundraiser this year, and it is Saturday, prom at Park Tavern, all you can drink, $65, all you can drink. Now, please come. It's going to be great, and we look forward to having all of you. And it's very, very important that we we really raise money for Midtown High School. This is We essentially give all of our money to the school and it's just a great great thing so we appreciate your support and we look forward to you all getting the word out and seeing all of you there right. so and if you can't you. go you can still bid online absolutely yes yeah. yes so kind of a random question but um someone recommended me maybe through foundation be heard like that we're going to address some of the um drug issues that happen that seem to be a little bit more widespread than I think I was initially realizing. I've been talking to different parents and parents from private schools are saying that certain private schools will do testing, counseling will do, bring in speakers to address, um, you know, use and, and things like that. Is that anything that, that we as a public school are able to do or you all are interested in doing and when we get the funds for that? But do we so want to say so one a couple of things? Which we can't do uh, drug testing at all, but um, we do offer um, counseling for students who have, say, been suspended for having marijuana, vaping. Uh, Mr. Young runs uh, a couple of groups that they have some group work uh, about you know, drug use, addiction, for specific situations. Yes. Um, the health curriculum also talks about the drug and alcohol abuse, use um, if your child takes health, and every child does take health. Um, but we're absolutely, we're open to any kind of programs, and Sarah can probably talk about the two programs, and education things. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to say that for next time, or if you I'm want just, to hit it while it's hot. I'm just saying for, for 30 seconds, We well, not, I think it's related. We are working on a seminar series for parents and guardians around mental health and wellness, specifically anxiety and depression in our adolescents. Um, we're just trying to firm up our final speakers, but it'll be a three-part seminar series, um, hopefully starting in February, tied in with Saturday school and Monday evening. So we have multiple ways for people to engage, um, panel of experts from our community and um, even like a CDC person talking about the national situation and, and really hoping to build upon helping us all understand the situation. And then what are what do you do about it? And where why can we feel potentially hopeful? Because it is a massive problem. Um, and I think there's a direct correlation between that and substance use. So that would be my answer right now from the PTO is that we're focusing on the mental wellness part of it. And then we'll see where we go from there. Right. 
And, and if you want to see more of this, funding the PTSO will help us do this. Come to the auction. <laughs> and the auction, yes. Please come. Please support. I actually volunteered with the foundation at the last Saturday school. The PTSO is going to get more involved with that. We love it. The kids loved it. They had a great time. They It was just such the most open, friendly environment. I handed out Chick-fil-A. They were so appreciative. It's just It was just a wonderful time. We want to do more of that. So the very kinds of topics that you're bringing up, we would like to support. But we also need parent parental support. So come have a good time Saturday or donate online. Or next time, we'll also hand out magnets. We didn't get a chance to do that. So if you all have joined the PTSO is actually free. You just sign up, but you'll get a magnet to make a donation. And in the interest of time, I think that's all we have. We have some clips on the PTSO officer. So uh, if you have next time we'll you talk about officer or on the executive board. Right. Oh we got know somebody that would there's no question you're on can you read that I'll right. take you know, uh, consent we'll have some health just to have a file Sometimes, and it really takes a lot of new people, new energy. Now that they have, fun. <laughs> <laughs> I can't expect John. Let's look at what it's done to me. There's one question about getting on, um, consent in advance for the social worker or slash Hazel Health to be working with students. Do you need that in advance to have that engagement? Um, that would be a count for question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or social. Okay. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.